section 8 sauti se o brahman chavana the son of bribu begot a son in the womb of his wife sukanya and that son was the illustrious pramati of resplendent energy and pramati begot in the womb of gritachi a son called ruru and ruru begot on his wife pramadwara a son called sunaka and i shall relate to you in detail o brahmana the entire history of ruru of abundant energy o listen to it then in full formerly there was a great rishi called stulaksha stula kesha possessed of ascetic power and learning and kindly disposed towards all creatures at that time o brahmana sage vishwavashu the king of the gandhara Gandharvas it is said had intimacy with Menaka the celestial dancing god and the apsara Menaka o thou of the brigures when our time was come brought forth an infant near the hermitage of Stulakesha and dropping the newborn infant on the banks banks of the river o brahmana Menaka the apsara being destitute of pity and shame went away and the rishi stulakesha of great ascetic power discovered the infant lying forsaken in a lonely part of the river side and he perceived that it was a female child bright as the offspring of an immortal and blazing as it were with beauty and the great brahmana stulakesha the first of muni seeing that female child and filled with compassion took it up and reared it When the lovely child grew up in his holy habitation the noble minded and blessed rishi stulakesha performing in due succession all the ceremonies beginning with that at birth as ordained by the divine law and because she surpassed all of her sex in goodness beauty and every quality the great rishi called her by the name pramadwara and the pious ruru having seen pramadwara in the hermitage of stulakesha became one whose heart was pierced by the god of love and ruru by means of his companions made his father pramati the son of bribu acquainted with his passion and pramati demanded her of the far famed stula kesha for his son and her foster father betrothed the virgin pramadwara to ruru fixing the nuptials for the day when the star varagad daivata varaga daivata purva palguni would be ascended then within a few days of the time fixed for the nuptials the beautiful virgin while at play with companions of her own sex her time having come impelled by fate trod upon a serpent which she did not perceive as it lay in coil and the reptile urged to execute the will of fate violently darted its envenomed fangs into the body of the headless maiden and stung by that serpent she instantly dropped senseless on the ground her color faded and all the graces of her person went off and with disheveled hair she became a spectacle of woe to her companions and friends and she who was so agreeable to behold became on a death what was too painful to look at and the curl of slander was lying on the ground like one asleep being overcome with the poison of the snake once more became more beautiful than in life and her foster father and the other holy ascetics who were there all saw her lying motionless upon the ground with the splendor of lotus and then there came many noted brahmanas filled with compassion and they sat around her and and swastya treya swastya treya mahajana kushika sanka mekala udalaka kata and shweta of great renown bharadvaja kaunakutsya arshti sena gautama pramati and pramati sang ruru and other inhabitants of the forest came there and when they saw that maiden lying dead on the ground overcome with the poison of the reptile 
that bitana they all wept filled with compassion but ruru mortified beyond measure retired from the scene so ends the eighth section of the paulama parva of the adi parva of the blessed mahabharata